It is another edition of Extra Points with Bill Haston. I'm Gary Amick from the Tulsa World. Thank you very much for tuning in. You can do it every week. Thanks to your friends, not just at the World, but at Google, Apple, and Spotify. Uh, Bill, it's my third week in a row where I've uh, broadcast from out in the back porch. Once again, looking for Namaste. Namaste or Namaste? Which one is it? Serenity I now? The, I think it's the former. The pronunciation? Okay. Yeah. I think uh, the former, but I don't want to, I don't know. I mean, I've heard others pronounce it and I think I don't want to correctly the first time. I don't want to irritate all of our yoga listeners, but um, right. Serenity is the word. This has become, it's gone from curiosity to crisis to four alarm disaster at Oklahoma, Bill, five alarm. How many, how many alarms are we putting on the disaster? That was the OU Texas game Saturday. Well, um, I, I mean, I I remember a, a post game <laughs> interview uh, after K State, and one of the linebackers said, "All of our goals are still in front of us. Everything that we set out to do this season." And then uh, TCU happens, and then you're like. You know, you just hoping you can win the Big 12 and find a way to rally and win the Big 12. And then Texas happens. And so unprecedented, so, uh, you know. And here's here's part of the, of what's so uh, disheartening. It's got to be disheartening for OU fans is I watched a lot of college football Saturday and saw several backup quarterbacks play really well. Mm -hmm. KU's guy played really well. He played well enough for them to win that game. That was just a who has the ball last wins the game. Right, kind of a right. Great game. Um, for that matter, Duggan a few weeks ago was a it backup. Is officially a backup quarterback, yes, going into uh, the season. So for OU to have been that hapless, Garen, in the Cotton Bowl when they had to go to their two, their, their second quarterback, uh, you know, it's uh, it's – there are myriad issues, and that's one of them. And but after a third consecutive loss, after having been outscored, have given up almost 150 points in three weeks, and, and you're just getting clocked now. And uh, so yeah, I mean, I mean, it's all the alarm bells are sounding, uh, but I just don't know that there's a an ability to fix it. Not that's this the question, right? At this point. It's yeah. the, 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 the deficiency is glaring and apparent on defense. They're going to, I think they're going to get Dylan Gabriel back for Kansas, which means that I will have a functional offense. I'm not guaranteeing that they're going to score 30 because the last we saw of a healthy Gabriel, it wasn't that great. Um, it wasn't as good as it needs to be for Oklahoma to, to, to get to bowl eligibility, but at least it'll give the offense capability which is above what they had against the Longhorns. But, Bill, the holes are so wide and, and deep around the backup quarterback situation that it's it's gone – you go from trying to explain the free fall in the last three games to trying to come up with answers. And I don't know a way around this because you're regressing. Uh, you you – it's not like they're hiding players that they hope to redshirt, I don't think. And there are no layups on the schedule. Kansas mm -hmm. is now a problem, not a solution for the Sooners. Yeah, in Norman, Kansas is a problem. West Virginia will be a problem later in the year. The only team that was keeping OU out of, out of the basement of my Big 12 rankings, not anymore. But that game's in Morgantown. I wouldn't trust OU to beat West Virginia State on the road right now, let alone the Mountaineers. Texas Tech's in love, but Texas Tech would have been an issue had they come to Norman. I, what I'm saying is if the goal is to, to show progress and to and by that post a, a winning record or, or a six and six and six record, I don't know where you get that based on what I've seen the last two weeks in particular, but even three overall. So I'm open to su for suggestions. I'm sure Brent Venables, even if he wouldn't admit it, would, would feel the, the same. Right. Well, they uh, 
they're allowing in the three conference games, Gary, OU's allowed 587 yards a game. That is the worst figure in the conference by nearly 100 yards. Mm -hmm. They've given up 20 offensive touchdowns in three conference games. Nobody else has given up more than 12. I mean, they are so the, – the, the problems are so extreme and the failures have been so glaring uh, that it's – it's. I mean, I've got, I got a whole sheet of amazing stats and uh, storytelling stats. I mean, I'm not going to recite them all because uh, – I mean, nobody wants to sit and hear all that. But, I mean, they're 116th now in third down defense. 116th in the country. They are. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm riffing off of a stat you reported in a column eight or, eight or nine or ten days ago. But uh, they now, in these three losses, Garen, they have given up. I didn't even include penalty first downs, just offensive first downs by the opposition. 86 first right. downs. Yeah. That, that the other team got the necessary yardage to get a first down. Yeah. 86 times. And, and in these three games, uh, opponents are converting 54% on third down. Um, so it's – to me, I mean, the season is obviously – is is broken to pieces. Uh, and, and it's irreparable. And, I mean, no, nah, I guess that's – you know, you could somehow find a way and, and – rally and get to eight wins or something but i just thought i don't if you've been this dismal for three weeks then it's kind of like parcells coach parcells used to say you are what your record says you are and so i i'm i'm really stressed to come up with enough wins to get these guys in a bowl mm -hmm. never mind could some sort of miraculous uh second half of the season so i think um, I mean, the portal is such is such a, a, a giant piece in roster assembly now, but I think priority number one right now in Norman, I mean, you got you got to coach them up, hope for the best and, and for better results right now. But I think also, man, you got to – they are ranked sixth nationally as we speak with the 23 recruiting class. Right. You got to make sure that you don't. Uh, that that doesn't fall apart. Right. And well, I've it, seen teams like have tragically, unexpectedly bad seasons and hold together a great class. But and so it's been done and it can be done, but they got to yeah. do. It. Well, someone asked me this week about Venables as a recruiter. I, I don't question that. He's going to get players. I, I And I think he'll keep regardless of what. Well, I don't think they, they better go three and nine, but I, I think. I, I trust Venables to hold that group together and, and to bring in a pretty good looking class. I trust him to bring in players that fit the ace, the SEC model moving forward, because that's, a, that's everything that they're not everything. A lot of what they're doing in Norman is not just with uh, the big 12 in mind, but the SEC, of course, but you brought up the portal. And this is, I think a story that um, is overlooked a little bit. I, I, I don't question the fact that Lincoln Riley his departure clearly had an impact on the roster. Caleb Williams, for for goodness sake, went with him to SC. And you start there, then you go to Mario Williams, then you go to Latrell McCutcheon. And if you say, well, Latrell McCutcheon's not a big deal, I say, have you seen this defense play? He he might help you at least. He'd be mm -hmm. an option. Okay. Um, they lose Spencer Rattler and Austin Stogner to South Carolina. You have fallout from Riley. You have fallout from the NFL draft. Perry on Winfrey, Isaiah Thomas, Brian Osamoa, Nick Benito. You lose all those cats. But you mentioned the transfer portal. It's not as if this staff was installed last spring and it was sort of state of emergency in, term, in terms of this wasn't, let's put it this way. This wasn't Bob Stoops in, in December of 1998 out in a, a trailer with Bobby Jack Wright and Jerry Schmidt turn, literally turning over rocks to find out what Texas coaches they can still call and salvage a recruiting class. Right. That's not what this was. This was a, a situation where you still had, even if 40% of the roster had overturned, you still had players that other coaches would sort of like to have in, in the majority of FBS schools. And you had a transfer portal, which every coach has to cherry pick from. That's, that's the reality of college football in 2022. I would say, Bill, that one of the, fa one of the failings of this season 
when it comes time to sort of, you know, go down the checklist and, and lay blame, I got to be honest, man. One of the failings is they they did not read the portal well at all. And it's not just because of Davis Bevel. I'm not putting this all on the lack of a backup quarterback that they had to pick up from Pitt because no one else would come because of Dylan Gabriel. I'm talking about just not enough stopgap players to fill the obvious gaps that were in place. And so among the coaching problems, to me, has been a, a situation where they just did not – they misread or misevaluated, whatever you want to call it, the transfer portal when those guys got to Norman in, in December and early January. Does it – in a <clears throat> – uh, it feels to me, though, like their position in the portal is so much different going into this offseason – because, I mean, portal guys, by definition, are not really looking for a place to compete to play. They're not competing for – they don't want to compete for a job. They want to play. Right. Uh, which is not to say they're not competitive. But they're looking for a situation where they can get on the field right away. Right. And it feels like, you know, at OU, there's a lot of uh, – there's a lot of openings for uh, immediate – Sure. Got to come in and, and immediately slide right into the into the first unit. So right. Um no, I mean this is you know, it's like you always notice and, and it's always written about and talked about how a president ages so rapidly after he's in off after he or she is in office, you know, a uh, president ages so um way beyond. Uh, what you would age if you weren't the president. Mm -hmm. Brent Venables in a month. Uh, obviously, the stress level on the best of days for a coach is it's a tough it's a tough gig, right? But he really looks like he is suffering right now, and he looks like a guy who is saying what he's saying on uh, on Mondays, but. Uh, he he knows those personnel better than anybody, and mm -hmm. he he can. I think he has a pretty good sense of what's coming in October and November, and so it's just yeah, it's shocking. It's it's every program has dips, um, and and since they hired Bob Stoops, there was a dip in '05. There was a dip in 14. Um, Landry Jones didn't win the Big 12, and yet they were always like right there, right? Yeah. And But with regard to this, you know, uh, I think most of you fans thought they'd never see this again in their lifetime. Well, uh, one more thing, and then we'll get to and a lot of OU fans never have seen this in their lifetime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. I got, I got an email amongst many, many others this week from a guy and included it in the in the mailbag posted today about uh, fans' entitlement. A guy who lived in Nebraska for a number of years was around a bunch of people who never thought, right, never thought it would happen to them. Hus the Huskers and and the problems that they've encountered since Frank Solich left, basically. And he, he said, let, let this sort of be a reminder that you're, you're just not immune. You, can, you might think you are. And he's not saying that, he's not saying that you know, 95% of, of the OU fan base has reacted like spoiled brats to what's going on and entitled babies. But he's just cautioning those who don't essentially appreciate what they have to appreciate it. And it, you, we need, I think we need to be reminded of that now and then as to how long OU has had it so well. It, mm -hmm. It's you mentioned the word dip. Everyone's had that dip. I mean, since, since Bob Stoops took over 23 years ago, I looked it up. Ohio State is the only thing that even compares. But even they had a losing record 10 years ago with Luke Fickle. They went they went six and seven. Alabama's had three losing seasons since then. That seems crazy to think based on what Saban has done with the program. They but that it's happened three times in the last 23 years. Clemson's had that. Michigan's had that. USC just had that last year. That's why Lincoln Riley is out at, in Southern California. Notre Dame has had that. Florida. All three Florida schools. Yeah. Penn no, State. Right. The state of Florida. Yeah. yeah. yeah uh, Georgia, LSU, 
other SEC programs, Tennessee, of course. Mm-hmm. OU's dip was eight and five. That's right. Not five think, and eight. In 23 seasons before this, two five loss seasons, 05 and, and 14. Is that it? That might be it. The 09 team lost four, I want to say. Don't know if they lost five. Ended up in the Sun Bowl. That was the team that lost Bradford and Gresham to injury. Right. Yeah, that team was uh, doomed. But, yeah, no, but, but yeah, the point Bradford, is, right? Bradford was knocked out in, 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 in the first football game ever played at uh, AT&T Stadium, actually. Yeah, uh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. BYU. Yep. So what I'm saying is, if you haven't appreciated, if, you, if you're an OU follower and you're listening or watching the, the, the podcast here, if you have not, you know, kissed your bobblehead or <laughs> your, your Cupid doll and, and said, thank you for the last 23 years, I bet you will by the time the season ends. Because you're finally getting around to what every other fan base, every other fan base, Alabama included, right. has right. suffered through at one point in the last two decades. It's, it's, it's about time. All right. Uh, things not nearly as grim in Stillwater, Bill. OSU goes to TCU. Another uh, game that uh, – it's a cliched word, right? But it, it, it sort of fits. Showdown in the Big 12. The Cowboys had one two weeks ago at Baylor. This one feels even bigger based on how TCU is playing and based on uh, the fact that Oklahoma State can really take a, a big step forward in terms of conference championship game position, if not conference championship position, by, by getting this one in Fort Worth. But how do you think it sets up? Has that has that line moved? I wonder. What is it? What what's I is it TCU minus four? Three and a half. The last two, I saw. Two and a half? Three and a half. Three and a half. Okay. I mean, uh, but uh I think uh I uh I believe uh TCU is, is uh, here's what we're about to find out about TCU. Are they just a really hot team or are they a really good team? Uh, that's a and, great way to put it yeah and, and but i think they're really good and um uh, uh sunny dykes and duggan are a heck of a combination and you know i mean even coming out of kansas's loss to tcu i thought isn't that fascinating nobody i mean you could have done a computer model of improbable scenarios in the preseason, ask a computer to provide the most improbable scenarios in college football. <clears throat> and I don't think it ever would have spit out that Sonny Dykes and Lance Leipold are on the short list for national coach of the year. Yeah. And that right. game day would be in Lawrence. Yeah. All right. The same day Texas and OU are playing. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> I think it's, uh, I think. It's really risky, dangerous business to have your quarterback run the football 58 times, which is what Spencer Sanders has done to this point in the season. Uh, and Mike said it himself in the post game. Really, it might have been his first statement uh, after the Texas Tech game is we've got to run the ball better. Mm -hmm. And they look at their tailback rushing numbers, Garen. They're not very good. And you know what? I, I've got to say this because I saw the guy play so frequently in high school. Mm -hmm. Why the crap does it Raylan Presley get a look in the backfield? I'm telling you, he has I don't care if he's three foot ten or five foot ten or in between. I don't care. He has unbelievable burst, unbelievable vision. And there's a reason he scored a million touchdowns at Bixby. He's really good. And I don't understand why they don't why they don't, you know, and as I understood it too, he was recruited. And the pitch was. We're going to use you both as a running back and a slot receiver. And he was going to be kind of a, a you know, yeah. a, weapon, a, a really versatile weapon. And you know what they got him doing? Covering punts. Made a pretty big play at Baylor. Else, well, he we'll made a great him. play. He made we'll a big him. play. But uh, what, you're, what you're suggesting is he could help you in the place he was he right. was he was recruited to help you is what yeah. you said. Yeah. Yes. He's a two-time player of the year. I mean, yeah. he's untackleable in high school. And I don't so get I don't get why he hasn't gotten uh, some reps in the backfield. So, uh, but you know, I've said this before the Waco game, and I'll say it again. I've I've learned to uh, stop 
underestimating OSU's ability to win tough road games. Yes. I just think that this, when we sit here, you and I, in mid-December and look back on the season, I have a feeling that maybe we'll look back at this game having been OSU's best opponent. Yeah. TCU. I don't think TCU is – they are hot, but I don't think they're just hot. I think they're – they've got real substance to them and, and they've got real weapons and they're really being coached up. And I think this is a, uh, I'll be, I'll, I'll, t- I'll say it. I mean, you can look at all issues, uh, success on the road, um, their personnel, all of it. And I'll be surprised that, and they're really good, but I'll be surprised if they win at Fort Worth. It's, it's the best quarterback they've faced. I know the kid from tech had a great, had a really good game last week, Baron Morton. Uh, and Blake Shapin is is a good quarterback at Baylor. This is the best quarterback they've they played to date. These are the best receivers they will have defended to date. Uh, it's weird, isn't it? Where you go into a big game against TCU, and you're and it's not just that you're not talking about Gary Patterson. You're not talking about Gary Patterson's defense because mm-hmm. for you, we're conditioned to think that's the challenge that the Cowboys are going to have to come into this game and figure out a way to get to you know 24 points. If Spencer Sanders and and I keep man I'm, I keep picturing that ice pack he had on his shoulder after <laughs> after the Tech game man I he, I hope he doesn't show up at that thing on Saturday but if if, uh, if Sanders is good to go and they're able to cut loose the entire package on offense I think they'll get to 24. This is a game where you worry more about Oklahoma State's defense against TCU's offense. I that's. Uh, where was the, just for a second here? Yeah, where, yeah, yeah. Where was the OU Kansas line uh, at the beginning of the week? Do you beginning remember the beginning of the week? No, the 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 point spread on KU. Oh, OU oh, by football. about a, oh, you by a touchdown, something in that neighborhood. Okay. Well, Sooners now are favored by nine. Uh, uh, what was the line on Oklahoma State TCU? Okay, it is. Uh, it opened at three and a half. It now is at four, just for the record. Yeah, that's uh, that's about solid. That's I mentioned the OUK right. the OUK line must be moving based on quarterbacks. I think people are not. I, there's no way I don't think Daniels plays for Kansas, and that, and I think there's a good chance that they'll get Gabriel back. But anyway, um, well, that was a mess yesterday. He's out for the year. No, he's not out for the year. He's, oh, oh, the Daniels thing. Yeah, that, yeah, that was a problem. But anyway, but uh, I I worry about I, and I didn't haven't had to say this in a couple of years, Bill, but I I really do worry about OSU's defense holding up in a big game. And, 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 and and that's, that's not so much because the Cowboys are giving up a lot of yards. They are. Uh, It's more, I don't know if they, I, I, this is going to be a little bit of a shock to their system. I think Duggan, Quentin Johnson, uh, that's not Zach Evans, a five-star running back anymore for TCU, but Kenry Miller is pretty good. (laughs) And that's a really good looking offensive line that, um, that they can that that the frogs use to exploit you defensively, your defense. Right. Uh, you, you mentioned Sonny Dykes, proven offensive coach, and he is. Uh, he's got an offense coordinator that I think Oklahoma people will recall. Yeah, uh, right. Garrett, Garrett Riley, who also knows I think what he's doing, and um, I, I just think the Cowboys are going to need. I didn't think they need thirty to beat Baylor. I thought they need 25, 26. I think they, they need thirty to beat the Horn Frogs. Because I, well, OSU, uh, I'm I'm just looking at some refreshed uh, national statistical rankings, which is foolish to really rely too heavily on that when you're, you know, speculating about a ball game. But uh, the the things they're really good at, they have been really good at, uh, is really better than anything uh, defensively, is. And they remind me a little bit of the 2011 defense in this regard. But, yeah, they give up more yards than you'd like, but they get off the field a lot of times when it's really important to get off the field. They do. And they are 11th in the country in third down defense. Um, So just – I got to say, too, Kansas TCU, I've never seen so many tough catches on the back line of the end zone that were good catches mm-hmm. after review after review after review, both sides. Man, that was a heck of a game. Yeah. Uh, I I just think uh, 
And you know what? On Kansas, my thought was coming out of that game, I wouldn't drop them in the rankings at all. If anything, I might boost them a spot. Or two. I don't think they did draw. Uh, but dude, I don't think they did either. But but I was just thinking it would be such a sickening uh, injustice if they were just like dropped out of the poll, yeah. losing a ball game. Come right. on, man. They were great. I just think um, I think there's a great chance by season's end we look back and say, yep, TCU was the best team on. Or maybe, yeah, we, we may say that TCU was the best team on both OU and OSU schedules. Mm-hmm. And, and if we say that, then uh, TCU is going to mess around and win the league. Yeah. They are really, really impressive. If I'm uh, if I'm Derek Mason, the, the OSU defensive coordinator, I'm I'm begging my my guys up front, get to Duggan before he gets to our secondary. That you've got to generate. Gundy's been referencing this, Bill, the last couple of weeks. That's sort of working with an all-star team up front, and they were producing uh, all-star statistics for a while. That's dropped off a little bit since Big 12 play started. They got to have an A game from Martin, Oliver, Lacey, and Ford, Evers, Ossie. Whoever rotates in there has got to what? has got to make a dent in, in TCU's scheme, pass blocking because I, I just – Again, I'm I'm scared to death at TCU's perimeter guys against uh, what has been a rebuilt and and has been a, a good but not anything more than that OSU secondary. They're not ready to be great. They don't need to be great. They just need to hold up. And I, I don't know if you give Doug enough if you give Doug in too much time. I don't know if it's going to hold up. Right. Uh, you know the, you remember that you were there, and I know where the press box is situated in Waco, so you had a good angle on it. Uh, but the the safety play at at Baylor, you know, when, when OSU dropped, shaping for a safety, uh, and he tried to leave the pocket, and the edge was sealed beautifully. OSU does that a lot. They do that yep. really well. And so you talk about uh, the the importance of doing that, you know, time and time and time again this weekend. Just mm-hmm. keep dugging in that space, and uh, you know. Uh, he he's a he's a big playmaker when he gets out of the pocket. So mm-hmm. uh, that's one thing OSU does really well that they have to have to do is, is kind of contain him and don't let him take a broken play and make a big play out of it. And yeah. but in the back of the defense, yeah, don't know, don't know if they're ready to win a big game. I think you just said that. <laughs> it's okay. That's right. That's no, right. that's that's the issue. And and while I had a good friend suggest earlier this week that if you if you make Duggan one dimensional, force him to throw more than mm-hmm. move, you have a better chance. That might be the case. But you know what? The guy's a second rated passer in college football behind mm-hmm. behind the guy who's the runaway favorite for the Heisman right now, C.J. Stroud at Ohio State. That, oh. That's how sharp Duggan has been this year. It's going to be a mess for the OSU uh, defense potentially if again that D line does not show up and, and matter um what do you got on your plate this weekend where, where are you going to be friday oh my gosh or thursday oh. friday both both nights you got a double header cooking yeah but I, i'm gonna i'm gonna see uh you know what I, i'm i'm fascinated by rejoice christian okay but they're they're a juggernaut in 2a they're i mean they scored 74 points against bags i mean that's that got my attention so I will finally see. I saw them in seven on seven. I've interviewed and hung out with uh, Chan, uh, Chance Wilson and got to know him a little bit. And but I'm finally going to see him play a game against an undefeated opponent tomorrow night. And I'm looking forward to that because uh, Vanita plays at Rejoice. And then Friday night, uh, I can kind of tip my hand a little bit on the direction I'm going with it. But Broken Arrow plays at Bixby, and you know what? Uh, Bixby has been so relentlessly amazing. Mm-hmm. It's kind of it's kind of getting overlooked. They're kind of getting uh, it's kind of being taken for granted. Uh, they have outscored now six opponents by an average of nearly sixty points a game. I mean, this is historic stuff. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, and here's another chance to make a statement in Tulsa County against one of the big dogs, right? So uh, Bixby, for the first time, hosts in 
as a 6A1 program for the first time, Bixby hosts one of the other big dogs uh, Friday at uh, at Bixby. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, Broken Arrow at its best is <clears throat> is uh, good enough to beat just about everybody in 6A1, uh, I think, but Bixby. Uh, but that'll be an interesting game. Um, McLean gets to play this week. I'm happy about that. Yeah, go back to Cushing to play a really good Cushing team. Uh, but I'm just I'm just happy that McLean gets to play because um, mm. talk about fluke. I went to Cushing last Friday to talk with Dale Conduct, the Wagner coach, about right. what he's doing for uh, McLean, which is to give them 100. percent They're going to host McLean next week and give them 100 percent of the game, uh, which would be about five grand. That's good though. Uh, that's really a beautiful gesture by by Wagner. For sure, yeah. for sure. We don't want to play. We do want to play. We want McLean to play. And you know they could have said, okay, well we've got to spend some money on game ops, so we will split the gate with you. No, they said we're going to give him a hundred percent of the gate. So I'm pr I'm proud of Wagner for that. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's an uh, it's an interesting. Uh, Football weekend for sure. Barry Lewis and I are going to be together both at Rejoice and Bixby. Yeah. And, and um, for the Sunday World 2, I could, I could kind of give you a little tip on the direction of uh, some additional copy. I'm not going to because I was at Southern Hills today. Uh, He's got the styrofoam for those listening. He's got the Southern Hills Cup. Well, every time, I see, cup. every time I see one of these, I'm reminded of when Bob Stoops came to the caravan and he had, he was holding one of these and sipping out of it, and we were watching OU win the national championship in golf. Yeah, that's right. We're wrapping that up, and you yep. may have been there. I don't remember, but no, no, I heard the I wasn't there, but I heard. Yeah, I've heard the stories. And Bob's holding this and sipping out. We're watching golf, and I said, uh, "How did you play today at Southern Hills?" And he said, "How did you know I played at Southern Hills?" And I said, "Bob, <laughs> yoink." <laughs> he said, "Oh, okay." Uh, what was what was in the cup when Bob was sipping on? Yeah, it? did did you ask him what he was drinking? Nah, nah it was a, no, 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 no. It was it was a. Uh, you think it was soda? Yes. No, I I know I know it had a little bit of a <laughs> chuckle juice or whatever Bob would call it. Maybe it has to rock. Maybe the the earliest uh, uh, barrel of rock and roll tequila. That's be. right. That might have been his first sample. For all yeah. we know. I don't know, but but he was, uh, uh, but uh, I was just curious, you know, now that we're four months, four and a half, whatever it is, months removed from the PGA, you know. Yeah, right, right. Has the golf course recovered? What's going on? And uh, with regard to uh, upcoming announcements, nothing is imminent with regard to an announcement on a future majors, but. Uh, there's something going on next week that's interesting with okay. regard, uh, Southern Hills ongoing quest for another major. Okay. And, uh, and the golf course, it was just interesting too. Um, uh, you know, they're saying that tomorrow will be the busiest day of the year with regard to member and guest play on the golf course. Oh yeah. Whether, yeah, just for, it's just, there's no event or anything. It's just the weather has turned so beautiful, you know? Uh, that Nick Sidorka said, yeah, I think tomorrow will be the busiest day we've had this year and may have this year. So, um, but it was kind of fun. It was fun to go to Southern Hills and not ride a bus for 30 minutes. And it was, <laughs> and it, well, it was. Uh, I'm not speaking just for the media people. Everybody had to ride a bus uh, to Southern Hills in May. But uh, it was interesting too, though, to get up on the property and there's no yeah. traces anywhere of, tournament stuff you know and the grass is a hundred percent uh throughout the property the grass is all recovered and it's just mm -hmm. typical postcard southern hills all over again so yeah. but um hopefully uh nick and the other leadership people come out of next week's uh they're going to frisco to the pga of america new uh their new headquarters I don't, I don't know if a lot of people even realize the PGA of America now has moved to Frisco. They're right by the star. 
So uh, isn't that amazing, the development of that place? Yeah. In, a, what, 10 years? Mm -hmm. It is truly unbelievable. So, um, but no, the, it'll uh, it'll be a, it'll be an interesting. We're we're coming up on, you know, it's always interesting because at the mid season mark for college football, you're really creeping toward the finish line of the regular season for high school football. So, mm -hmm. I mean, we we. It won't be too terribly long before we start looking at first round pairings for the high school playoffs. That's right. I just remember thinking uh, in the summer, I thought, okay, Bixby and 6A1, they'll probably lose two, maybe three games, but they'll be very competitive. Mm -hmm. They'll get to the semis at least. And this is unbelievable. What they're doing is truly unbelievable. So mm -hmm. uh, I just don't know that it, it, it's just so. Uh, they're so consistent with what they're doing every week. 77 14 last week or whatever it was, and and 80 to nothing before that. And just week after week at 67 to three. Um, it's just amazing. And you know what's interesting? This is the last thing I'll say about high schools for now. Uh, it's got to be a little bit of a challenge for Lauren Montgomery to keep those guys coached up, motivated when they when those starters know they're not gonna get to play more than a half. Every week, these could play half. They play half as much football as anybody else's starters. And yet, obviously, there's no let up in prep or mm -hmm. commitment, right? Because they're still beating the crap out of everybody. Yeah. I just, I think it's so, so impressive. Yeah. Uh, you get that level of consistency from guys who know they're not going to play more than two quarters. Mm -hmm. So the, the goal now is just to uh, play Bixby starters until the <laughs> until the final horn. If you're if it's uh it's coach championship, right for Broken O, his, he's going to tell us Tigers, look, no, he's not going to East night. He wouldn't say that. He's not going to say our goal is just to stay within name your school. But uh, no, his, his message would be let's let's. Uh, I just think they got too many issues on defense, but but I mean his message will be. If we don't beat ourselves, we can win this game. Yeah, right. Yeah, there's. It's not like they're not lacking for talent for sure. But it Bixby is. No. Bixby is. You're, you're grading on a curve. Let's put it that way. When you're when you're reviewing the film the day after. Everybody else is in six A and Bixby's in like ten A. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Just, they are amazingly coached football mm -hmm. program. Bixby. Yeah. Well. Um. All right. So you've got Rejoice. You've got Bixby Bro a Broken Arrow. I'll be in Fort Worth. Eli Letterman and Eric Bailey will be covering the Sooners and the Jayhawks, perhaps, Bill. Uh, By the way, I don't know where you rate the Fort Worth uh, stadium renovation. I think they did an amazing job. Oh, yeah. No, I love that stadium. I love that box. I love that whole suite level. I no, think they did a fantastic right. job there. Uh, I I would put it – okay, ranked them up top, top of our heads. Uh, Big 12 stadiums. Oh boy! Now see, I, I need more time to research because I'm gonna I'm gonna oh. make a mistake because I I like more than I don't when it comes to the I don't like Big, big Twelve road okay. trips that much, but stadiums are a different story, mm -hmm. right? I enjoy I enjoy Ames. Uh, I I I don't love that press box, uh, but but what they've done with their ballpark at Ames, I think is spectacular. It's the best tailgate scene in the uh, Big Twelve. It's a beautiful tailgate scene. It's very concentrated. Yeah, uh, but right there. Uh, it's not like scattered over the campus. It's like right there in yeah. this, the parking lot. And um, and it is it uh, Fort Worth turf or grass? Oh boy, it was grass for the longest time. I think it. I think it still is grass. I think. Well, that in itself is interesting because uh, it's so rare to have grass fields, and yet Norman is still grass. Ames, uh, and I think you're right. I think TCU's great. I think they're still the the, the real stuff. Um, anyway, no, it's a it's a cool stadium. Um, good fan base. That place is going to be right. And when they they don't always fill it like they do at Iowa State, but um, which is another reason to go to Ames for a game. But uh, when it when it's a, when there's a buzz in the air, that's about as loud a house as there is as well in the conference. Right. Which is another reason why the Cowboys have got to. Uh, Got to be serious on on Saturday. Uh, there'll be a lot of uh, there'll be a lot of Oklahoma State people there. No doubt, no yeah. doubt. And if the band goes, 
that's also one of the places where they put the band in the upper, like they're in, they're in the, they literally have to see through vapor because they're so high. They're looking yep. through clouds back down on the field. So I another, remember another, uh, the, uh, the last time I covered a game there was Jalen Hurts at TCU. And okay. I had friends, a couple of friends at the game. And uh, so I got there, put my stuff away, went outside, went up to see them, and they were seated next or near the band. You're exactly right. Yes, yeah. it's, it's insulting. Well, you, I, anyway, I, 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 what would you want them closer to the action? I mean, I don't know why you, why you feel like you got to do that. It's that way in Waco. It's that way in Fort Worth, and it's that way in Austin. And if I'm a, if I am the uh, the visiting team, I'm I'm saying, well, you don't want to deprive the kids of a trip. I'm thinking of logic, not how you're you're not you're not able to send band members who practice as many hours as football players to to, to do their thing. The pride road trip, but there's also common sense. Right. It would be it would be solved. It would be solved if the schools would cut that bleep out and just put them somewhere reasonable. I would even if I'm a network tell us the game, I would tell the home team, don't do that. Yeah. I mean, that's part of our eye candy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. On the presentation, that's right. It's part of what people come yep. to expect are cutaways to the band, and yep. and don't put them in the nosebleeds. That's stupid. Yeah. Yep. Well, disrespectful, stupid, all that yep. stuff. But yep. otherwise, otherwise, <laughs> Fort Worth's a good place to watch a game. No, I think it's a great place. And, 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 and uh, the Stark Yards is a great place to hang and eat. And I, I've hey, never right not now. enjoyed going to Fort Worth. Well, I imagine it'll be a good time and it'll be a great game. Uh, Bill, we'll see you next week. Thanks very much for watching, listening, and reading our material at the Tulsa World. Again, this has been Extra Points. We'll do it again next week, courtesy of uh, the world, as well as uh, our friends uh, at Apple, Google, and Spotify who make downloading possible. Talk to you then.